between white men and the racially inferior Negro. He described the result as a racial swamp that would eventually destroy the natural superiority of the Aryan race. Another Nazi publication described blacks as African brutes who had not been tamed even by centuries of slavery. It went on to say that any effort to assimilate people of African descent into civilized society was a waste of time and that the lynchings of blacks in America did not merit any regret. Since World War II, it has been well documented that Adolf Hitler was profoundly influenced by the American eugenics movement and that many of his government's racial policies were actually developed from the writings of American eugenicists like Madison Grant and Harry Laughlin. In fact, Hitler referred to Grant's book, The Passing of the Great Race, as his Bible. Meanwhile, American eugenicists were routinely praising Hitler and holding up the Nazi eugenics program as a model for the United States to copy. The leader of the German nation, Adolf Hitler, has been able to construct a comprehensive racial policy of population development and improvement. The difference between the Jew and the Aryan is as unsurmountable as that between black and white. Germany has set a pattern which other nations must follow. Dr. Clarence Gordon Campbell, 1935, President, Eugenics Research Association, New York. Among those American eugenicists who most strongly supported the Nazis was a member of the American Eugenics Society, a director of the American Birth Control League and a writer for the Birth Control Review. His name was Lothrop Stoddard. As an avowed racist, Stoddard was the author of a book called The Rising Tide of Color Against White World Supremacy, which was widely promoted by the Ku Klux Klan. In another book, The Dragon and the Cross, Stoddard was identified as the exalted Cyclops of the Massachusetts chapter of the Klan. Non-white races must be excluded from America. The red and black races, if left to themselves, revert to a savage or semi-savage state in a short time. Lothrop Stoddard, Director, American Birth Control League. On the 19th of December, 1939, during a four-month stay in Germany, Stoddard was given a personal meeting with both Adolf Hitler and the man who would eventually be in charge of the Nazi Holocaust, SS leader Heinrich Himmler. Later, when a course on race was introduced at Halle University in Germany, its instructor stated that it would be modeled on the philosophies of American eugenicists, including Lothrop Stoddard. Eventually, Stoddard's racial views would even be featured in Nazi school textbooks. The white race divides into three main subspecies, the Nordics, the Alpines, and the Mediterraneans. All three are good stocks, ranking in genetic worth well above the various colored races. Lothrop Stoddard, Director, American Birth Control League. To eliminate blacks from Germany, one of the people Hitler called on was a eugenicist who had once written that blacks are an inferior race of savages who should only be allowed to survive as long as they are of use to the Aryan race. His name was Eugen Fischer. And about 20 years earlier, he had been one of the leaders of a system of concentration camps in southwestern Africa, where blacks were rounded up to be executed, experimented on, or held as free labor. Under Hitler, Fischer would serve on committees that planned the sterilization of all blacks in countries that came under German control. He would also be one of the first Nazi scientists to become publicly affiliated with the Carnegie-funded Eugenics Laboratory in Cold Spring Harbor, New York. Eventually, Fischer would also be put in charge of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, which was funded by the Rockefeller Foundation. It was here that many of the Nazi programs for creating racial purity were developed. In 1927, Margaret Sanger organized the World Population Conference in Geneva, Switzerland, and gave it front-page coverage in her birth control review. The events program shows that several of its attendees were colleagues of Sanger's from the American eugenics movement. It also documents that among those who were given a leadership role in the conference was Eugen Fischer, the man who would eventually lead the Nazi effort to eradicate blacks from Europe. Another American eugenicist with Nazi connections was 
Harry Laughlin. Now, he was an official with both the American Eugenics Society and the American Birth Control League, and in 1928, his plan for using forced sterilization to eliminate those who might produce what he called degenerate offspring was published in the Birth Control Review. In 1936, Laughlin led an effort to distribute the English language version of a Nazi eugenics film to audiences in the northeastern part of the United States. He had acquired the rights to the film from the Race Policy Office of the Nazi Party and, with the help of two other American eugenics organizations, had mailed literature to biology teachers at 3,000 U.S. high schools, urging them to show it in their classrooms. Later that year, Laughlin was praised in a Nazi newspaper and awarded an honorary degree from the University of Heidelberg for his contributions to the Nazi eugenics effort. In the 1930s, a German psychiatrist named Ernst Rudin was named president of the International Federation of Eugenics in Cold Spring Harbor, New York, which was funded by the Carnegie Corporation. And in 1933, his call for racial purity was published in the Birth Control Review. Later. Rudin would be chosen by Hitler to write Germany's eugenics laws. And at one point, he personally helped the Gestapo round up and sterilize several hundred blacks, who they referred to as Rhineland Bastards. After the war, Rudin would be identified as one of the architects of the barbaric medical experiments that the Nazis carried out in their concentration camps. It may be possible that Hitler actually got the idea for concentration camps while studying the American eugenics movement. In 1919, the state of Indiana had allocated $300,000 to create a work colony in the city of Butlerville, where those who were labeled feeble-minded would be incarcerated. Then in 1932, Margaret Sanger called for the United States government to set aside farms and open spaces where certain groups of people would be segregated from the rest of society. She proposed that, among others, the illiterate, the unemployed, and the poor should be forcibly kept in these areas until they developed what she called better moral conduct. It was later discovered that under the Indiana program, the state was allowed to label someone feeble-minded if they were poor or did not do well in school or if the state considered them to be shiftless or have insufficient moral judgment. But it's important to understand that this Indiana campaign was not unlike those in other states. For example, a eugenics project conducted in Massachusetts during the late 1920s proposed sterilization for young girls who were diagnosed as defective, which could include being unwed and pregnant, financially poor, or if the state labeled them socially undesirable. In addition, boys as young as 14 could be castrated for showing signs of kleptomania or for exhibiting what was described as solitary behavior. In a single incident during 1935, the Nazis sterilized the children of over 600 German women because it was reported that those children had been fathered by black men. When news of this reached the United States, a member of the American Eugenics Society named Walter Ashby Plecker wrote a letter to the German Bureau of Human Betterment and Eugenics praising them for the action and expressing his hope that not one child had been missed. Ten years earlier, Plecker had written that the black population was the greatest problem and most destructive force which confronts the white race and American civilization. Eugenics goals are most likely attained under a name other than eugenics. Frederick Osborne, president and founding member of the American Eugenics Society. 